it didn't render the attachment, see? It didn't attach it and then it didn't actually show it. That's weird. So I sent it again. I am waiting. Is it to your Gmail account? Uh, no, I don't have my personal stuff set up on this laptop, so I had to send it to work. No, 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 no. I see the email. I don't see the attachment to it. No, no, that's all right. I got. It. I'll, I'll um, do it this way. He won't do it this so way. No attachment. No, no. It's just it's being, it is being finicky, and I don't like it. But we will get it working. By golly. If we want to, we could also. I don't know if you want to do it a different way, but we. Have I could take a. Yeah, I could we take, just a picture take a picture of it, which yeah. is how most people would want to do it anyway. Yeah. Well, I just give it here. Well, yeah, we could give it to you, a USB key or whatever. Yeah, we may. I, I don't want to have to USB it. We should be able to use email. By golly, it should work. Friggin' technology. It's the metal plate in my head. It messes everything up. <sighs> Trying to say hello to everybody in the chat room. I did. I've been talking to them. Okay, things on. Hi, hi, hi. Holy ben holy wants holy to know what client you're using. Airmail has been doing it to me lately. I don't know what it's doing. Do, the I'm just using the standard Outlook uh, iPhone tap, mail tap, client. Yep. Tap, 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 tap. Check it, check it, check, check. Test one, two, check, test check, one. Check. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Android L is officially Lollipop. Hey, uh, what machine is the chat thing on? Uh, the, this, this YouTube thing is like covering the edge of that a little bit and like one of the letters, some of the doing, I thought it was, I thought it was cu cutting off a letter but it was just Ben, Ben not speaking correct English. AJ, what client are you using? Airmail has been doing it me lately. Yeah, I'm. Uh, said, I'm no, using I know you. I'm just. Okay. Are I'm you just reading it back? Of his text, of his uh, messaging. He didn't say doing. He says, Airmail has been doing it me lately. What does that mean, Ben? He doesn't do this on the USB key. Yeah, because by the time I type this okay. in, hang on. that's all been done. And we're like 20 minutes later. Oh, well, that's not good. Are we? Oh, I apologize if we're late. Not meaning to be late. Okay, see, it should be over here in sent, and it should have a freaking attachment to it. There it is. Can I just? Can you see it yet? I can see it in the email, and I'm going to attempt to just drag this darn thing to my desktop, yes. Come on. Email, attachment, drag. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Come on now. Friggin' being so silly. What's up, man? Oh my god. Stranger. How you doing, man? Stranger danger. Danger stranger. How are you doing, sir? By golly, it seems like 10 years have gone by. There we go, OK. Yeah. Looks like we got it. I'm going to close that. Take this one back. Take that one here. And do this. He's okay. got it. Groovy. Look at that. Okay. Awesome. Is the live stream going yet? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. I guess we're like live, live, live. Oh. Okay. What's up, people? 
<laughs> if you've been hanging out. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. We're getting started here in a little bit. This is what happens when we shoot the daily show live. We don't usually do this, actually. Um, maybe I should sit down instead of standing up. Where's my chair? Uh, back over there. <coughs> back over where? It just occurred to me I should set my phasers to stun. Oh, yes. <sighs> Sweet. Thank you, Ken. Oh, what's the uh, stream link so I can text it to Michelle? The stream? Geekbeat.tv slash live. Yep. That's the easy one. OK. Janie says, I have four streams. How is that even possible? Don't cross the streams. Geekbeat.tv slash live. Yep. Get geekbeat.tv forward slash live. If he shows up the other thing, I can get it from there. Oh, that, like what is it? Well, he can no, mirror no, I've got it right it. there. Yeah, it's right here. It's he right just there. does that and mirrors it. See yeah. it? No, I'm talking about the other thing. The, the other, the thing I was charging. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I don't know if I'm going to get to that. We can, we can save that for a future yeah. show. Yeah. It's actually not a bad idea. Johnny excited. Johnny can't wait. It's going to be cool today, people. Man, these lights are bright. I am not kidding you. It's actually Oh, my that, you see, you made me look. I know. That <laughs> monitor is hard to see. It's too dim. Uh, I think it's just super weird. I can't do anything about it. Oh, you know what? But I can do something about it. I can do this. Hold on. Hold on. Don't touch it. Yeah, where we go? Where we go? Where you we go? Where we go? Where did it go? It's in the main, isn't it? Yeah, hold on a second. You can make you can adjust an external monitor? No, no. no. Yeah, I'm looking because they changed it and they moved it. There it is. User interface. Let us go for dun 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 light. Ah, oh, let's so be much light. better. I love it. I'm going against the tide though. Most people don't like that. So now I can see better. That's for old people like, the, like me. The flat tweaks they did in what two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. The latest rev where yeah. everything's a lot flatter. And the okay, let's do it. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. stuff. All right, are we ready, John? How are we going to do the uh, tease? What do you want to mm -hmm. do? Uh, I don't know. I'll read something into my little. I'll okay. say something into my little my, into my little camera, right? Yeah. And then we'll and then we'll do our thing. Do our thing. Do our thing. All right, here we go. And in three, two. Hey, guys, today we're going to learn how to convert sketches into vector artwork. I'm John P. Welcome to Geek Beat. Okay. okay. I'll make the intro and then you cut to the wide angle. Start at the wide angle. Yeah, start at the wide angle because there's going to be an ad. That's fine. That's going to be a close up. There we go. And, and oh, so now we're coming back after the ad, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, I am very excited. I've actually been waiting on this day to come for weeks because weeks. we've got AJ with us. He is the Adobe expert extraordinaire. <laughs> He's also my a uh, former college instructor, mm -hmm. and he taught me everything that I know about Photoshop, which arguably is less than a lot of other people. I apologize. <laughs> Has no reflection on the <laughs> quality of the instruction. Um, but here's the deal. So I contacted AJ like a couple weeks ago. I said, AJ, I have a challenge. Mm. I need to learn something, and you're the man for the job. So here's the the concept in a nutshell i sketch things i draw things they're very badly drawn but i do this i draw stuff uh and we've got a couple of really simple stars here and mm -hmm. what i want to do is i want to take these drawings and convert them into digitized format and i have specific reason although i can come up with at least three reasons people might want to do this okay there may be more but one reason is if you, like me, happen to have a CNC plasma cutting machine 
and you wanted to cut something out of metal, you need to be able to take it from concept to execution and you have to be able to take the sketch and convert it to a line path that a machine can cut. And then the second thing, which is related to the first, would be if you do, let's say, sign work and you need to mm -hmm. cut vinyl, you know, right. lettering or images out of vinyl. And then the last thing I could think of is if you had some kind of a drawing or a sketch and you wanted to be able to blow it up and not have it be all pixelated, mm -hmm. well, it has to be in a vector format so that it's all kind of line art that can be colored in and you keep smooth edges. Otherwise, if you blow up an image and it gets all those little blocky, pixely things, right? right? Mm -hmm. So the thought was, you know, how do we do this? And in the past, I learned how to do it with Corel Draw, but Corel Draw is like, <laughs> do they even make it anymore? I don't think so. So I need to get into the future. I need to learn how to do this with Illustrator. Can you teach us this? Yes, I can. We're going to look at several different things today. Okay. So I'm going to start with your drawing. So we're going to start with that. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll just I'm going to make a blank document inside of Illustrator. Right? So the size of the canvas and all that doesn't matter. Um, but what does matter is your output intent. So you mentioned um, making vinyl signs. You mentioned yeah. your CNC cutter. So um, that would matter in terms of color. So in terms of the colors that you're using, yeah, do you that, know what colors you're using for that? Is the it color, well, the color on like... Well, so whether the material was being cut out of metal or mm -hmm. vinyl, that color choice will be determined at the end with whatever material we would roll and in, put into the cutter or whatever. Okay. So it's, for all intents and purposes, these can be just black and white line art. It, the color is irrelevant to me. It's just being okay. able to get the lines in there and manipulate the little dots. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, start with a, an RGB color space because that'll give us the widest range of color and then we can always trim down later. Okay. Uh, the size of the actual canvas doesn't matter because I'm going to change the canvas size based on uh, the size of your artwork, right? So I actually have that. You sent it to me earlier. It's just a JPEG file. So here's the JPEG of your drawing. Which and was I, just a scan, basically. We just right. took it and stuck it in a scanner. Yeah, it could be a photograph. You could use your cell phone, any, any type of way just to digitize it. So you can see I'm dragging it over to Illustrator. I'm just going to let it go. Um, it's much larger than my canvas, and that's OK, because I'm going to zoom out. And what I'll do is I'll just resize the canvas to this artwork, right? So over to the left, I have a canvas or artboard tool. Hmm. I'm going to select this. This makes the artboard live. I'm just going to stretch my artboard and make it fit more appropriately for the actual artwork that we have. Right? So once I've done that, I can change back to any tool. Here's now our artboard. I can zoom in a little bit. There's the artwork. And this is essentially a raster drawing, right? So there are two types of graphics. Today we're talking about vector graphics out of Illustrator, which is really meant to scale. That's the main thing here. I can start with something small that would fit on a business card. We could blow it up and make it fit on a billboard. Um, and we don't have to worry about having multiple files. So if I was working with Photoshop, which is a, another choice that people use, you would have to be concerned about the output right from the start. Hey, you could have literally five different files, same image, because you're using different outputs. So if I zoom in, you can see this pixelated image. If we take a real close look, right, you can see here's the drawing. The closer we get, this is yeah. the pixelation that we were talking about. And that's what we don't right? want. And that's what we don't want. Oh, right? by the way, just for the record, the, the way this image was drawn, it was drawn using like a Sharpie mm -hmm. on a piece of white printer paper. That's, okay. that's why the edges are all jagged and stuff, which we'll have to clean up a bit. Yeah. All right. So I have a couple things that I can do here. The first thing that I'm going to try is the most automated, and that's to use uh, image trace. Right. So I'm going to just ask Illustrator, take this raster image, you trace it, and let's see what we get in terms of vector output. So I'm going to go ahead and just click that button right up here at the top. Now, is that always there in Illustrator? It's right there? This or is... Or you have to pull up a specific specific menu or how did that get there? So if I don't select the artwork on the page, you can see that my options across oh, the top change. Yeah. I'm using my primary selection tool and when I select the artwork, these are the options related to the image itself. Okay, so it just knows that if you have that kind of image, you might want to trace it. Yes. So the image trace has been around for a little bit, but what's new is when I trace this, it brings up a panel, right? So I actually have an image tracing panel. 
I can go under my window menu. Here it is, the image tracing panel. And if I open that and pull it into view, these are the options related to that artwork. Ah. Okay. So we've done a default of just black and white because we wanted line art. I haven't changed anything about this. We already have a preview. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom. And we should see right away, look at that. When we zoom in, look at how smooth those lines are. Wow. All right. Now, I know there's one other thing, too, that I forgot to mention to you, which was probably self-evident. But when, when I use these kind of things, I know you can trace different. But my in the middle of it. OK. All right. So what I'm going to do is this is the preview of the trace. It looks fairly good. There's some things that maybe we clean up later, mm -hmm. all right? But I'm going to go ahead and just take this and expand it, and it will turn it into paths. Yes. Okay? Now, I will point out, when you use the image trace, this is probably the quickest way to get a piece of line art actually traced in. But see all the blue dots? Can everyone see the blue dots? If I zoom in a little bit better, all of these points and paths and anchor points around this image, the more anchor points you have, the more segments you have, and that actually makes the file larger. And I would assume for your purposes, for the vinyl cutting and for the uh, CNC cutter, the more points you have, the probably the harder it is it, to cut, right? It makes it a lot slower because okay. it has to calculate the cut path between every point. Right. It knows a line, it knows an arc, but if it has to go point to point to point to point, it like cutting that, like those are stars, so they should really only have like one, two, three, right. four, five, maybe ten points, right, to mm -hmm. define the entire star. Uh, but with all of those, it would probably take ten times as long to cut out as if we clean it up. Yeah, so you can see, I select this, I'm just going to change the color real quick. Hey, this is actually, it, it grabbed the background as a piece of the artwork. We don't want that, so I'll delete it. Okay, so here it grabs, it actually has uh, inside go. color, Yep. right? So, you know, maybe we don't want that, so I can get rid of that. Um, but really what we have is lots of anchor points. Yeah, tons. Okay, and you can see as I zoom in, I've got, you know, three or four anchor points. I want to try and simplify this. So I can take this object here. I can go to my path menu and I can try and simplify it. Now, um, the concern here is as we start removing the additional anchor points, the ones that are redundant should pull out pretty easily, but there is the possibility that it might alter the artwork a little bit, right? So you can see a couple things. It's actually rounding out the top point of the star. But we did go from having probably 60 to 100 points around this object to now we have. Oh, it says you know, originally 184, now 20. Yes. Right, so there we are, 184 points to start from the original trace, because again, it is trying to maintain that fidelity and accuracy of the actual artwork, but now we've reduced it down to 20 points. I can play with my precision, so here, notice if I go with less precision, it rounds out the item even more, and I'll zoom in. And we lost points, it went down to 15 points from 20. Yes, and you can see the original artwork is the black line here, and the proposed change is in blue. Yeah. Right, so we can see exactly what's happening before we commit to it. If I go to the right and uh, opt for more precision, we will get more points. Yeah, now we're up to 47. Okay. So what I might do is simplify this way, but I could still go in and I could look at this artwork. And let me zoom. And I could try to just manually delete some points. So you can see right here, I've got one, two, three, four points before this curve. I probably don't need the two points in the middle. So I can use my delete anchor point tool. And I could just come into this artwork and just start deleting these. But notice the change, <clears throat> right? So notice the change to the line that happens. Okay? But it is a little bit straighter and that might actually work. By the way, can we, t does this, does Illustrator in CorelDRAW, they had something called wireframe mode that would make the basically the black line disappear so we'd yes. only be seeing the... We can go right to the view menu and we can switch to that outline preview. Oh, it's just called outline, okay. Mm -hmm. And you can see, and actually I'm glad that you asked to do that because we actually have two pieces of artwork here. Oh, we do. All right, so if I go back to the preview, 
Yeah, we got the inside line and the outside line. That's correct. So what I'm going to try and do is select the outside line. Oh, and it's still, yeah. And whoops. So they're actually joined together. I need to. Now you got to break them apart. Yeah, I'm going to select them one by one. So let's try and grab this line here. There we go. Yep. So I've got two. I need to change and let's see if we can pull that away very simply. Oh, we brought them both. Yeah, they're to joined together. So I've got my inside and outside line. And you can see this, this is because we did the image trace, right? Yep. So let's talk about the complexity when you go to print because what's going to happen when you actually try to do the vinyl it's going to see two paths right yeah you right. can't you got to get rid of one of them yes all right <clears throat> all right so let me now is the whole thing basically grouped together does it come in as one giant group because it's selecting both stars plus inside and outside lines yes so i'm going to try and ungroup these start breaking them apart Oh, and now we've got just one star there. Yeah, and let's try and move this one out of the way. Whoops. This is the one that we're ah, working on. Now everything is ungrouped. Yes, and this is the one that's much, much bigger. So okay, we'll so now you can get, get rid out of the that. way. And we'll get rid of this one here. Yeah, we don't need him. <clears throat> now the other one is kind of hidden off the side, I yes, guess. Yes, and this is where that outline view is very useful. Oh, yeah. Right? So here's the outline view. I can bring this back. And you can see again, I'll zoom in. And we have more of these points. So I will work on the right side. And again, using this delete anchor point tool, you can see I can probably delete some of these redundant points, but it will change the shape. Now, See how noticed, it's impacting the shape? Yeah, and I noticed that as you do that, if you can zoom in on one of those, it's giving us little handlebar things mm -hmm. to grab. Yeah, so these direction handles control any line that has a curve, right? Yep. Now, I can fix that by turning it into just kind of a straight or a corner point with this conversion tool. And that will, whoops. It looks like we've got two points yes. that are right beside each other so close that you can barely see them. Yeah. Yeah, there's a loop actually right here. That's weird. So, mm -hmm. And this is the issue. So yeah, there's a little tiny loop right there. So let's delete that point. There we go. And now we're back to just having the straight. Now we just have the one. Now I only see one little handlebar on that. that there. Oh, the other one is just off to the side, way mm -hmm. far, far out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can take this single point, and now it's straight. And if I zoom out, you can see the impact it's had on the path. Yeah, now it's right. nice and straight. Mm -hmm. Now you can move those points around by dragging the point itself, or you can, you can mess with the curves by dragging the little handlebar things. Right, and if we step away from this artwork for just a second, let's do just kind of a, a, a quick summary of working with lines and points. So I'm gonna take my rectangle tool and just draw a square. And if we look at it, you can see it actually has four points. <clears throat> so there's one on each corner. So here's a corner point, there's one, and as I hover over them, they blow up, right? And I could move those individually, so I could take this point and move it. We could change the shape of this rectangle. We have new tools inside of Illustrator. This is the Creative Cloud version, the 2014 release. And I can actually take that corner and turn it into a curve right away. Oh, that, sweet. That little control right here lets me actually change whether this is a corner or a rounded point. Okay, what if you want all four corners to be rounded, but you want to be round the exact same kind of rounded? Can you select them all? So I would select them all. Drag one. Oh, sweet. Okay, and see how we can actually you make that into, into a, a circle. circle? Yeah. Right? So if you have an older version of Illustrator, you could also do this, but you would be using something like the conversion tool, and you would be converting these points one at a time. Right, and you can see when I do that, it kind of drags off screen. That's kind of 
ridiculous, <laughs> right? Especially since I'm using a touchpad, but you can see I could do these one at a time. So that added little control makes things a lot simpler. And that's something that I want to emphasize here with the version of Illustrator I'm using today. There are newer tools to simplify the overall workflow and make a lot of this stuff faster, right? So here I have, you know, corner points, rectangular points. My conversion tool changes those to be rounded. It lets me adjust these direction handles so I can change the curve. And notice how the curve actually follows this direction handle up or down, right? And this is how we typically modify different shapes. Um, if I actually started with a circle, if I go off to the right and draw a circle, a circle starts with rounded points. So here I have a circle, and it starts off with rounded points. So if we take a look at that and I use the same selection arrow, I have handles right away. Yeah. Okay? And again, I can adjust the curvature by grabbing those direction handles. And using that same conversion tool, I could turn this into a rectangle by making all of the curved <laughs> points square. That's amazing. Right. Now, one other thing, too. Can you go back to where that, when that was a perfect circle? Sure. Um, and those, now those little handlebars, whatever you called them, uh, if you grab a hold of one of those and just move it a little bit, the other one moves at the exact same opposing rate. It's as if that is one particular bar. There you mm -hmm. go. Now, if you go back over to your square, you had a totally different situation going on with mm -hmm. that corner point where you were able to adjust those two things completely independent. independently. Right? Now, and how I'll, do you affect that? And I'll explain why that happens. By default, when you have a point that's curved. It's going to be the symmetrical. handles are symmetrical. Yeah. Right. That is the default behavior. So move one, they both move. Yeah. Now there's a shortcut key. Mm -hmm. If I want to break them individually, I can hold my Option key on a Mac or Alt key on a PC, and I can break those apart. Right. And this is as I'm drawing. In this case, it would copy it. My conversion tool is how I'm breaking these apart. So I move one, and now they're broken apart. Go back to my direction tool. And you can see once they're broken apart, they stay broken apart. Yeah. If I want them to be symmetrical again, yep. I use that same conversion tool, and, oh, and now they're symmetrical. You grabbed the point at the middle, and mm -hmm. then you dragged out from there, and that yes, it into because when I take a curved point and simply click it, uh -huh. it becomes a corner. Oh, okay. And now it's but straight. when you click it and, and drag, drag outward, that's where you're pulling the handlebars out, so you can mm -hmm. adjust that. And then if I grab a handlebar, if I grab a direction handle. Uh, on its own, then it actually breaks apart. Okay. So if I were to draw something, and let's go back to your artwork, okay, because I showed you how to trace it. Okay. So in summary, what we did is we took the piece of artwork and we dragged it onto Illustrator. And it doesn't show when I drag it the second time. Is so, it, do we have it in wireframe mode? Oh, that's you see. John is always two steps ahead of me. That's <laughs> Not what it was. Necessarily. <laughs> yeah. So, let me just zoom out and here's a nice thing. So, I'm going to get out of the wireframe mode. We have the one that we've just drawn. Let's go ahead and give it a color so we can see it. Right? So, there's a outline on it. And I'll increase the outline just a little bit so it actually shows up. So, there's the artwork and if I want, I can duplicate this artboard, put it here. So I have a second artboard. And again, in summary, what we did is we went out, found a JPEG, dragged it on top of Illustrator. We then placed it where we wanted it to be, and we used this image trace. Right? And the image trace ultimately got us here to this artwork that's on the left, and we simplified it. So once I had it actually selected and we removed all the exterior pieces, we went to the path panel and we said, let's simplify this. Let's reduce the overall number of points. And then using our delete anchor point tool, we've just been going in and kind of refining this artwork. Right? Now, I want to show you a couple other things that you can do with this piece of artwork before we talk about manually tracing it. This is, right now, a single uniform stroke. I can reduce the weight. So maybe this is going to apply when you go to print it or to cut it. 
right? So it's a single uniform stroke. I could change the type of brush being used on it. We could make it more artsy. So here it's got, it's still vector, right? So it's still mm -hmm. gonna scale, but it's got kind of a nice brush stroke to it. Um, if I undo that, I actually have a width tool. And this tool lets me go in and I can actually pull. Oh, just pieces of it. Mm -hmm. So you can make it wider on one side, thinner on the other. Yes, so I can actually pull and push and I oh, can change Oh, at any point, that. you're pulling it at a particular point. At a particular point, yes. So, and if I want to affect one side, I just hold my uh, Option key again on a Mac or Alt key on a PC, and I can grab one side and I can pull one side of this, right? Awesome. And this is staying vector. So the key thing here is, as I zoom in, we get all that fidelity. Doesn't matter how tightly I zoom in, we're gonna have smooth fidelity, nice clean lines. It will scale infinitely up or down. So again, I could grab this, we can make it really tiny. I'll hold the shift key, right? I can scale it out. And this is going to adjust. That's awesome. Right? Okay, now Harumph had a, a question for us. Yes. Will the image trace feature work on a color photo? It or will. Or let's, let's say a piece of color art or mm -hmm. photo, anything like that. You can, and I'll, I'll show that to you. Let's go back out to the finder. Let me go, and I'll try and find something that doesn't have like too many colors in it. Uh, doot, doot, doot. Actually, you know what? I'll grab this because it's got some solid colors. Uh, it also has skin tones. So cool. same thing. I'm going to drag this over and drop it. There's the image. This time, I'll actually scale the image down. Hold the shift key. I wish to scale this and make it fit the canvas. And I get the same option. So I'm going to zoom so you can see the image on the screen. I get the same option to image trace. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab that. That's going to give it a trace. It defaults black and white. So this is line art. That is awesome, though. Right? Now, this is vector. At this moment, it is actually vector. You could edit every point in that thing. I could. Now, but because we had so originally selected black and white, we've only got black and white. That's right. it. So if you take a look. 6,700 anchors. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 6,700 anchors. Yeah, let's zoom right here. So this is the drawing black and white. And 670 paths. That would take a while if you wanted to really tweak it and edit it. Yes, right? But, but it again, only has two colors, black and yeah, white. Yeah, black and white. If I want, I can choose color. And it's going to go oh, through really, and re-render. Yeah. Boundary refinement. Mm-hmm. This is going to take a little while. Now, remember, the when black you're and white working... happened pretty quick, but now it's got a lot more work to do. Yeah. Now, it kind of looks like a photograph, but here's the thing to remember. Illustrator oh. is a vector drawing tool, and everything you see has to be a path yeah, a closed and a shape. Path. These are closed paths and shapes. So there. these are the shapes that make up that artwork. There, in fact, it says there are 4,971 paths with 43,000 anchors and 30 colors. Yes. It looks like 30 colors is the maximum it can trace. Right. So th this is, you know, you've got to figure that, uh, oh, oh, I see you can actually go more. <laughs> you go to 100 colors. Yeah. Now, this is going to take a while. Yeah, and it's going to be, if you save this as an Illustrator file, it would be very large. It would be huge. Right. Oh, wow. 40,000 paths, a quarter of a million anchors, and 27,600 colors. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, as I hover, if you take a look, you can see as we zoom in, these are all the paths, these are all the shapes yeah. that give you that face. And here's where all the color changes are. You know what? what's funny? Right. right now, looking at that, it kind of reminds me of that uh, iconic Obama poster, you know, right. the Obama presidential poster that that mm -hmm. guy did. That's mm -hmm. kind of what it reminds me of. So yeah. you could probably take a photograph of yourself uh, in that Obama pose, run it through <laughs> Illustrator, and yes. bam, you've got your, you've got your Obama-like uh, uh, poster. Yep. Cool. So Any the other questions, you guys? Uh, for those of you who are watching the pre-recorded version of this, by the way, drop your questions in the uh, comments below and we'll get back to you on them. But I mean, I, I, that was basically everything that I needed to know. I can't believe how easy it was. Yeah. You I, drop the, yeah, that's a lot. Now, yeah, that's a lot, okay? 
Now, I wouldn't be remiss, though. We were talking about your, your artwork, yeah. some of the quickest ways to get it in. Now, I did want to show you this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new canvas, and then I'm going to switch. I'm actually going to switch over to my iPad. Okay. Oh, and this in, is your iPad. This is my iPad. Now, I'm, you've got a little mini. So he's got a yeah. little iPad mini sitting on the desk, but you've got that fed into your yeah. computer somehow. Yeah, so I'm mirroring it to my laptop, right? Uh, so I'm using AirPlay. I'm mirroring it to my laptop. And I'm going to start here in the lower right-hand corner. The Wait second a minute. Icon. Hang on. Before you move on, I didn't even know you could do that. You are <laughs> mirroring this to your iPad. What did you do to so, hit? So what, 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 I'm, what I'm doing is uh -huh. on the iPad. You just said mirror it to here. Yeah, I'll show you. So on the iPad, it's tough. Here, there we go. Yeah. Hey, I'm actually doing the little AirPlay, so the AirPlay icon. Yeah. And then I'm choosing my device. Right? Okay. So it's mirrored to my laptop. Now, to make it work on the laptop, yeah. because it's not an Apple TV, right? Yeah. If we had an Apple TV, it would show up in the list yeah. and you just AirPlay to it. For a laptop, and this is Mac or Windows, for a laptop, Mac or Windows, I'm using an application called Reflector. Oh, yeah. Right? So I use Reflector, and now I could actually do more than one device. So if I wanted to pop my phone up, we could put my phone and iPad side by side. That's cool. Um, and then I just took this, and I went ahead and took it full screen. Right? Do, do, do. So now, okay, so that's now we're, we're actually seeing your laptop in real time. Yes. Okay, sweet. Right? I mean, your, your iPad. iPad, yeah. Okay, sweet. Now, so what if, do you, you do? if you take a look in the, the bottom row, uh, the second icon from the left here, I have Adobe Illustrator Draw yeah. on my iPad. Okay. okay. And so what I'd like Wait to a do, minute. John, is um, why don't you... Wait a minute. Why don't you trace out that star here in landscape? So I can draw my... Yeah, I just can... draw your star again. Okay, I'll draw my star. Yeah, there we go. That's a little weak, but hey, there's hey. a star. It's right. So, but here we have it. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to go up to the menu and write from my iPad in Adobe Illustrator Draw. I'm going to say, send this to Illustrator. Now, I'm logged in. Does this app cost money? No, this app, draw? Is, this app is free. Adobe Draw is free. Yeah, Adobe Draw is free. Right, so you can see it actually just popped it over into Illustrator. That is ridiculous. Now here's the great thing, it is already. It's already vector. It's already vector. Now you can see it. It has like just a, a, lot, a lot of paths. A lot of. Hey, okay? a lot of them. Let's but go if ahead. We can just go simplify it or whatever. Yeah. So let's get rid of some of this. Hey, right? and do do do. I want to get rid of the background. Is it grouped? Yeah, it looks like it's grouped again. Let's do this, and nope. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go right to the Simplify. And we went from 1,471 points that you hand drew yeah. down to 103 points. Now, you also have curve precision set to 91%. Yeah, so, so I dropped that down to 50. And now, yeah, we're done. And then it notice looks a it gives little you, sloppier. Yeah, but it looks a little sloppier. It's going right? to require a little more cleanup work. Mm -hmm. But let's go and just take this up to, you know, say 80%. There's your lines a little better. Go ahead and click OK. And again, I can delete the things that I don't need. These little corners here, right? Yes, I know I want to do the delete anchor point. But I can get rid of this. I have just this artwork now. There's that piece. Oh. Right? So I am separate from that. I can actually, I'll copy this and let's take that back over. How did you get rid of the back part? I used the white arrow. So you have two selection tools. Yeah. This is an overall selection of everything. Yeah. And this is a drill down selection of an individual object or group. Oh, right. okay. So you just click that on the corner so you could grab just the background. Because yeah. when it came in, it came in as kind of like multiple things yes. grouped together. But it wasn't grouped. Yeah. It didn't, you weren't able to ungroup it. Right. All right. Now, here's the thing. This has kind of a, you know, kind of a stroked, you know, brush type path to it. Yep. So we could just say, look, I want to change this. Let's go ahead and um, simplify this. Doot, doot, and let's see. Let's release this compound path. And then let's change it to have a stroke. And there's your individual line. 
How about that? Right. So you could go right from your iPad. Hey, and let's do a couple other things because, you know, I like John, I, I'm not a very good artist um, and my artist friends like to uh, make fun of that. Um, but let's do this. I'm going to just quickly get a fresh canvas and because I can't draw what I would do, I would cheat. I have this little target here in the top right corner and see this little control? See how I have a circle here? Uh -huh. So I'm going to make that circle a little bigger and then I'm going to grab just this straight line so this one here and I'll just make this a little bigger whoops so this is a little bigger point and I'll just go right around <laughs> okay, and there's my circle and then you know let's get some other shapes so I can tap and now I can put a rectangle over here and it's just perfect and then I can tap again and let's put a triangle in the middle and then if I wanted to I could tap one more time and I actually get you know kind of this ruler that I can draw across right and I can move this around that is very cool and draw right inside uh, of this application and I can do the same thing I can take this artwork and this is using my uh, creative cloud login so I'm logged into this app on the iPad and then I'm logged into the app inside of Illustrator so all I have to do is send it to Illustrator and it goes across the cloud and it'll show up it's been sent flip back over to Illustrator, there is the artwork right there and we can start working on it. You didn't have it. to do anything, it mm -hmm. just opens a new project. Hey, hey, hey. Quick question. Um, yeah. The Creative Cloud lets you have and run two instances, so you could have your work machine and say your laptop while you're traveling. Yeah. So if, if we have both of those are logged in, mm -hmm. as our license allows, if we hit send to Illustrator, does it ask which one? Or does it just show up on both? Yeah, that's a good question. It showed up here because I actually happened to have Illustrator open right away. But let's say but it's if actually you, holding it in my account. Yeah. So what Dave was asking was, let's say because when you have a Creative Cloud license, you mm -hmm. get to use it on two machines. Yes. So like your desktop and your laptop. If you happen to have Illustrator open on both machines, it'll set them to both. It will go, just opens in both mm -hmm. of them. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to show you. I'm actually right now. I'm uh, using the desktop app. So when you're running the Creative Cloud, you get a desktop application and I'm accessing by clicking up here. So this just is like an activity stream that shows what I've been doing. So I've updated my apps. These are the apps that I actually have installed, right? So as a Creative Cloud... You've got cloud, a lot of them installed. <laughs> yeah, as a Creative Cloud subscriber, right, a full subscriber, uh -huh. you're getting all of the apps. So um, for those of you that maybe purchased the Master Collection back in the day, that was what, $2,500 retail? Yeah. That was everything, all the video, all the web, all the uh, print products. Um, as a Creative Cloud subscriber, you get all of these for the monthly fee, right? It's, so how much is it? It's like fifty bucks a so month an, or something? Yeah, an individual subscription for creative professionals. If you uh, commit if you to get a year, everything, yeah, it's fifty bucks a month. Right. Oh, but now you you're can, getting you all the get, apps. You can get a smaller bundle. Like if you just wanted maybe Photoshop and Illustrator, so, you could get a smaller bundle. So you can do the full subscription, which is fifty bucks for a year. If you just go month to month, mm -hmm. it'd be seventy five bucks. Mm -hmm. If you decide to do a year, you still pay monthly, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go for a year, you're not paying the year up front. Um, you can do an individual app. So you could just have Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And Illustrator, I think it's nineteen dollars, you know, twenty dollars a month for mm -hmm. the single app. Um, we have a very special photographer's bundle. So the photographer's bundle is Photoshop and our Lightroom product, and that is ten dollars a month. So that's actually really really the great. The full Photoshop, full and Photoshop, full Lightroom, full Photoshop for ten bucks a month. For ten bucks a month, that's right. actually a really good right. deal. Yeah, yeah. And what's nice about it is you're getting all these applications, um, which you know I've demonstrated today. You can see that I'm using my free mobile apps, you know, Adobe mobile apps, and tying it directly into the desktop. So I can now start, you know, kind of, uh, you know, creating out in the field, right? I can create something on my phone, I can create something on my iPad, and then I can shoot it over to my desktop or my laptop. You also get other assets, right? We have a marketplace now where you could, as a creative, put your artwork or your actions for Photoshop or your icons for Illustrator out for other people to access from the marketplace. You, you mean can, like if I were to draw my little stars, mm -hmm. I could, not that anybody wants them, <laughs> but if I made my little stars, I could shove them out there and anybody could grab and them. Anybody could grab them. Because I did the work and I made them vector and stuck yeah, them and out you, there. And you, now you could might, you know, know. have it for free, you could charge for it, right? So this is a free download. I could grab all these icons right now if I wanted to. Oh, cool. All right. And then in addition to you know this marketplace, I've got access to all these fonts. 
But right. you have to pay for them? No, it's part of the subscription. So you get, uh, I think it's you know over 200 plus fonts that you get access huh. to that you could use for either web-based projects or desktop projects. And I can go right from Illustrator into my type tool and say, look, I want to add fonts from the Typekit service or right from the app itself, I can say, let's go ahead and add these oh, fonts. That's awesome. So these are fonts I already have synced, right, that are synced not just to my laptop, but they're also synced to my desktop computer. Right? And then, of course, uh, Adobe decided to join the, the social media revolution, and now we have our own kind of uh, Facebook option um, where you can see other creatives. So these are people I follow, and I can actually go and take a look at their So like work. when they do work, they upload it, and you get to see their live stream mm -hmm. of their work. And then I can actually go to the Behance website if I want to and actually you know, see that live on Behance. So Roy Evans in the chat room says, I have the full bundle and it's great. We also have the full bundle, thanks mm -hmm. to Adobe, very <laughs> uh, nicely taking care of us. And I think it's great too, although I'm such an amateur with it. But I, I mean, this is awesome. Any other last little things you need to show us before we wrap it up? Oh, um, last little, yes, let me show you just a, uh, as many quick things as I can okay. in Illustrator as we wrap up. I'm going to do a blank canvas, just a couple key things, just for shapes, all right? And I'm going to just start with the star because we're uh, wrapping up. So I could hold my shift key when I draw an object, and this just makes sure that all the segments, all the paths are even, right? Specific for a star, if I use my up and down arrows, it'll change the points. Oh, wow. On the star. So I could get, you know, a three-sided triangle, four-sided, five-sided. Hey, I'm just using the up and down arrows to change that. If I actually hold the command key on my Mac or the control key on my PC, I can make the star more acute wow. or more obtuse. Right? So I can do that. How do you learn all this stuff? <laughs> Practice, Good constant God. practice, right? Um, and then a couple of the things I want to show here too. You have uh, different drawing modes. So the basic drawing mode is normal, and what that means is if I give this star a color, and then I actually draw something else, it'll draw on top, and I'll just give that a different color so we can see it. Right? So everything new that you draw is going to be in front, and this is the default behavior. I can change the default behavior by saying draw behind. And now with this mode selected, if I pick a different shape and draw, and I'll move it, it actually shows up behind things. So now I'm drawing to the back. Instead of drawing to the front, I'm drawing to the back. Right? So that's one mode. But we can do something else. I can take my star, reduce the number of points. Let's go with a five-sided star. We'll do this. We'll move it into place. I can also say, let's draw inside. So now this is actually a mask. It's gonna, is it going to make it a part of it? No, anything it's that I draw, little, yeah. I'm just going to grab a brush here, and I'll just pick a color. Hey, whoops, let me just deselect for a second and pick a different color. I'll just pick a different color, and if I paint, watch what happens when I paint. Oh, wow. Right? So that effectively, that star, that shape is now a mask. That kind of looks like a Christmas cookie with the icing on it. It makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something else that you can do. It's, it's really just the same thing as going to your object menu and making it a clipping mask. So you know, it's a quick way now to do a clipping mask for an object. And yeah. since we're in Illustrator, all of this is vector? All of this is vector. All right. Everything you see is vector. That yep. means we could cut it out yep. of metal. Yeah. One last trick here to show you before we uh, head off. I'm going to just pick a color. I'm going to draw this ring. I'm going to make the weight big enough so you can see. And I will take this and outline it. So I've got this shape. Okay? This is a shape. So now, now it's, you essentially turned it into like two circles. Right, but it is actually considered a single shape. Okay. Right? And the reason I did that is I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm holding my Option key or Alt key, and I'm just going to drag out some duplicates, and I'm going to make them overlap. The Olympics. Right? So here they are just kind of overlapping. Make and sure you don't violate the Olympics copyright. Yeah, exactly. Bad about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to change the colors, right? I'm just going to change the colors on these so we know what they are. So here's a blue one, right? Take this one. And again, everything that I'm drawing goes to the front. So I'll select this. We'll make it green. Right, and then I'll select this one, and then we'll just make this black. 
And here's what I wanted you to see. Notice that they're all overlapping, okay? But if I wanted to make it appear like the rings are intersecting, uh -huh. it would typically be a very long, drawn-out process. Yeah, you have to break the paths apart. You yes. have to, like, cut, cut things and connect things. And you would use, most likely, um, something called Pathfinder. This big, huge honking panel here that has, like, combined shapes, subtract shapes, intersect shapes, all of this stuff. Um, I don't need to do that because I have this one singular tool called Shape Builder. Okay? And with this Shape Builder tool, what I can do is I'm going to select all the items on the page. I'm going to go to the Shape Builder and I'm going to double click it so I can see my colors. So notice my Shape Builder actually shows me my colors. I'm using my arrow keys to change that. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see this. Right? I'm going to go right here and let's just say we want the red ring to go over the blue. So I chose red as the color, and I'm just going to drag across. Oh, that is ridiculous. All right, and now those two rings intersect. I want the blue ring to go over the green. I just drag, and now those rings intersect. I want the black ring over here to go over the green. Or actually, we'll make the green go over the black. And now those intersect, and if I zoom out, and show you the artwork and deselect it. And let's get rid of all of these panels. There's your intersecting rings. That is amazing in like right. two seconds. Okay, and that is the Shape Builder tool. Still all vector, Ugh. right? Still all working together. That is crazy. Okay, so. AJ, we, this has <laughs> been amazing. This is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted. I feel confident that I can now go and draw my things and cut them out and do all that stuff so thank you so you're much you're welcome thanks for having I me i hope you guys enjoyed it as well and find all kinds of useful reasons uh to have this knowledge <laughs> if you really like this kind of stuff then uh let us know we can yeah. do more of these types of tutorials and mm -hmm. aj knows all the adobe stuff really well so if there's specific requests that you want to learn let us know we'll take those into consideration for future Definitely. shows so that's it for this particular episode. Thumbs up on YouTube and share it with everyone. Hey, thanks, everybody. I'm, I'm John P. That's AJ. We'll see you later. Have a good one. That is cool. It's time to go cut some stuff out. All right. Hey, John, we need to do our ad. Okay. I got to go write it real quick. That was awesome. So much easier than I expected. And, like, way easier than Corel Draw. Well, and then with that. Let me go write the little ad for the show. In CorelDRAW, I used to have to, I'd have to launch